Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another video. This is going to be an interesting one for sure. I can't help, after playing this game for so many years, asking the strange questions. Like why does Kerbal in the stock game not have any clouds even though it's covered mostly by water? Many other questions of course, but I basically know why there are no clouds and no cities to speak of. And it's simply because the devs never have time, never had time to implement anything like that in the game. I get it. However, one of the pressing matters, the, the most interesting question of all is what are Kerbals? Now, if we go by the popular belief that's spreading around the internet right now, people say that the Kerbal civilization are plants, that they don't need to drink or breathe or even eat because everything is absorbed through the skin like a plant. Now, I realize that this is a game and everything here is, uh, well, not every well, not everything is totally fictional. There's a lot of stuff based on real, real life things but it's your game you play it how you want whatever makes it more fun for you that being said for me personally there are way too many things about the Kerbal civilization or Kerbals in general that prove that they are not plants now shoddy cast one of the youtubers that I watch he's really funny and a really awesome channel I definitely go and check him out but he covers the fact of why walking, talking, active mammals, how photosynthesis wouldn't be close to nearly enough to keep a creature that is very, very active alive. And I'll leave a link to the video that I'm talking about in the description below. Basically, the process of photosynthesis takes a very long time time. This is why no mammal or living creature that moves around and is very active on this planet uses photosynthesis other than plants. You don't see plants dancing in the street, running around and talking, hunting, building shelters, or even a space program. No. What are plants doing? Well, almost nothing. <laughs> sure, if you get a video camera and you tape record them and you speed up the footage, yeah, you can see them moving around and doing stuff, but that is about the extent of their speed and what they can actually accomplish and do. They're extremely, extremely slow. And because of the simple fact that the process of photosynthesis is just as slow. This is why most creatures that are moving around and doing things and generating heat and burning energy need to consume edible materials that their bodies can break down and use the available resources within the things that they consume. We're talking vitamins, we're talking minerals, we're talking calories, proteins, all of those wonderful ingredients that the body needs in order to continue moving and living. Kerbals eat. They eat food. They drink. The simple fact that they drink coffee, or maybe a beverage that's very much like that, is another sign that their body needs energy, immediate energy, in order to move around and do stuff. Their bodies have teeth in order to bite down or bite off or chew food. In other words, Kerbals are creatures that need food to survive. Now I can hear in the comments now, well, why can't they do both? Well, humans have a type of system to where if we're in the sunlight, our bodies do generate things like vitamin D. So something very similar could be true for the Kerbals. That being in a dark, damp place for way too long would be very unhealthy. The same is true for humans. But even if somehow they do have photos Photosynthesis. Sure, you could combine photosynthesis with eating food, but you really couldn't live one without the other if that's the case. You would need Kerbals to be have some sort of sunlight and food at the same time. Without food, the sunlight wouldn't be enough, the Kerbals would die. Without sunlight, eventually after a while, the Kerbals wouldn't be able to generate whatever it is that they generate through the sunlight in their bodies. Unless, of course, it was given to them in some sort of vitamin packs, then they could probably survive a little longer but it gets complicated after that so that's one of the things established that Kerbals need food to survive this other thing I keep on hearing about breathing through the skin well other than for an extremely an extremely rare case of a type of species like uh, I think it's a salamander that doesn't have any lungs whatsoever it breathes 
through its skin. Other than that animal, any other mammal that isn't underwater like a fish needs to have lungs in order to survive. I mean, I think there is a frog that doesn't have any lungs, but it needs to be submerged underwater constantly like a fish. But that's like a very rare exotic frog. I think that one salamander or the one creature that I was talking about that doesn't have any lungs, it moves very slowly. It doesn't move hardly at all. It's completely dependent on its skin exchanging oxygen through a very slow process. Absorbing oxygen into its body through a very slow process. This animal moves very slowly. There's a reason why extremely active creatures like human beings, for example, need to have lungs in order to pump air into our bodies and exhale the waste gases. Our muscles burn oxygen. They need oxygen to survive. Have you ever gone running and after a while your muscles start to burn? It's because they're not getting enough oxygen and you start creating acid, which hurts a lot. And that's from just breathing hard. Imagine if you had to wait for the oxygen to be absorbed into your skin. Yeah, you wouldn't be going anywhere anytime. <laughs> you wouldn't be going anywhere very quickly. Because even though they say breathing through your skin, you have to stop and think that the reason why we can breathe is because we have lungs that suck in air. There's nothing to suck in air through your skin if you don't have a if you don't have any lungs. You just kind of have to wait for the process to happen through the absorption of oxygen through your skin. That takes time. But where, Veos? Where, I hear you asking me. Where is their noses? How can Kerbals breathe in oxygen? Now, the game devs never really thought about this or thought this through. Obviously, they weren't trying to go that deep. They're just making a cute little game. And so they needed cute little people so that you can play with a bunch of green little people going into space. So really, it's anybody's guess. However, my theory about it is that they actually have noses that are on their heads. This kind of biological thing of having noses on your head is actually pretty common with life forms on this planet. So it's not out of the realm of possibilities. But Veos, wouldn't that mean that they got hair in their noses? Well, don't you have hair in your nose? It would actually be a pretty good place to put a nose in front of a hair shield, as it were to help from sucking up different elements through your nostrils that you don't need. Kind of like a natural filter. But of course, this is just a theory. It makes sense, and it works for this discussion, but it could be anybody's guess. The anatomy of a Kerbal is extremely, well, up in the air. However, I have another theory about that. My theory is that Kerbals are actually evolved from a type of amphibian creature, like a frog. Mind you that we're talking about another planet here, so it's not like frogs exist on that planet, but maybe an animal that's like a frog. This implication of Kerbals evolving from frog-like creatures would explain why they have big boogly eyes and even fingertips that have bulbous tips or fleshy bits on their tips of their fingers. Just like a frog. And if we get even into the more detailed aspects of it, it would explain why female Kerbals don't have the rack, if you know what I mean. They're about as flat as flat can be. This is primarily because of the fact that if they are from an amphibian-like creature like a frog, then Kerbals lay eggs. One could easily imagine the life cycle of a Kerbal being born in a semi-transparent egg, having the parent take care of that egg because it's a precious new Kerbal life. And then when the egg finally hatches, you've got a tiny little amphibious-like creature that really doesn't have any arms and legs just yet, just nubs that are moving around, eyes that aren't open, basically helpless. Then after a while, the eyes start to open, the legs start to grow. I could imagine a child, a Kerbal child, kind of stumbling around on his new legs and having little nubs that he sort of, he or she sort of can manipulate or use to manipulate objects, can actually, cannot actually feed themselves just yet, still need help. They still need help from parents to do that, or some machine contraption, who knows. And then finally, when they start to mature a little more, they take the form of your typical Kerbal being. Kerbal families could have a litter, or through uh, long periods of evolution, knowing that it's a small little planet, if, you know, Kerbals were having a, 
a, a litter of you know five or six children per family that would overpopulate the planet very quickly so i'm thinking it'd be more along the lines of like human having one child per birth two max or you know like twins or triplets very rare but it does happen i mean of course the question still remains is that how does a frog-like species become a spacefaring civilization over millions of years of evolution that would have to be covered in another video but to generally generalize it any predator would have to hunt down its prey in other words it has to use brain power to figure out problems and hunting strategies which would allow for better brain development over time it gets deeper than that but that's completely for another video because they are still small creatures I could imagine that their heartbeats would be very rapid not like a million miles per hour rapid but definitely way more beats per minute than a typical human being hell it's even possible that because their heads are so big compared to their bodies that their bodies probably hold most of the mass muscles and bones and things of this nature while the heads of the kerbals not only possess not only have you know the sensory and eyes and and mouth and brain but it's very possible that they could also house the lungs not saying that's a thing but it would make more sense to have the lungs near where the nose would be so i could imagine that if you were to watch a kerbal breathe that it could be that maybe the sides or back of their heads would slowly go in and out in a breathing motion nothing ridiculous mind you but still no different than our chest going in and out when we breathe it's not obvious if you stare at somebody breathing you're not going to see their chest go in and out unless you like sit there and really look at them or if they just ran a marathon but it's an interesting concept to think of. This would of course allow the body part of the Kerbal to house things like the heart, stomach, and intestines, and all that other good stuff. I mean, when they fall down and, and hit the ground and poof into like a cloud of smoke, you know, that kind of throws a monkey wrench in any theory whatsoever, even in the plant theory, because there's no splat, they just go poof. It's almost like they were made out of gunpowder or something. But pushing that aside. So there it is. A very basic, very generalized video about why I think Kerbals are not plants. But let me hear what you think about it. You know, I'm very interested to read your comments. I read your comments all the time. Let me hear what you think a Kerbal is. So that's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for watching this, watching this video and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Love you all, stay safe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.